guys, it's Kara. I'm gonna show you around the garden today. We're gardening here in zone 7A in Virginia. So a lot of things are already growing and filling in and I figured it was a good time to give you guys kind of an early season garden tour. Last year we had the raised bed garden and we also had an in-ground garden space over in one of our front fields. And with the new baby coming this summer, I wanted to try to make gardening as easy as possible this summer. So we're focusing just on the raised bed garden this year. We have a total of 30 raised garden beds. Now they're all different sizes and I am counting the L-shaped beds as two beds because they have two different shutoff valves. And so those are kind of the zones in my mind. Ryan had come through and mulched all the raised beds for me. And he even laid down some landscaping fabrics in the pathways. So the garden's looking really nice today and I'm excited to share it with you guys. I'm gonna start you guys off just on the outside of the garden and then we'll make our way in. Over here in our front L-shaped beds, we have a lot of different flowers growing. Walking over here to the corner, the bachelor's button is all blooming. I just bought a mixed variety of all different colors and direct sowed them from seed. I did some in the fall and I also planted some earlier this spring. So I'm not sure which seed germinated, but we have flowers, so that's all that matters. There's several different colors here, the bachelor's button. Some of it is kind of like a dark maroon color and some has more blues. And then there's whites and a little bit of pinks and a couple reds speckled throughout. However, this mix so far seems to be primarily whites and blues. There's only like one or two reds here and there. There's also a volunteer sunflower growing from last year amongst the bachelor's button. And next to the bachelor's button, this big thing right here is hollyhocks. This is kind of a pink champagne color hollyhocks. I grew this last year, so this is its second year in the ground and it's huge this year compared to last year. Last year, I think it got about a foot max. It had a very light, pale, kind of blush color. It was really pretty. So I'm excited to see all this blooming because there are lots of buds on this plant. Next to the hollyhocks, I have a couple different little flower varieties. There's a few straw flowers popping up and I only have two snapdragons that made it. I did not do so well with snapdragons this year. Several of them died on me, but I have a pinkish blush color one and a white one coming up. So at least I have a couple, but I failed kind of on growing the rest of my snapdragons this year. There's also a couple of little nasturtium plants here as well. I think this nasturtium plant is really beautiful. The leaves have a white variegated striping to them that I think is really pretty. I love anything with a variegated leaf. I think it adds a fun, unique color to the garden. These nasturtiums I direct sowed from seed. I believe it was called the Alaska Mix Nasturtium Packet from Baker Creek Seed. Nasturtiums are kind of fun because you can eat the leaves and you can also eat the flowers as well. So in addition to being beautiful, it's also edible. The dahlias next to the nasturtiums are also coming up pretty nicely. Some of them are just little tiny sprouts and some are a lot bigger already. Like this one's pretty bushy and big. And then there's a couple that are just starting to pop out of the ground still. This dahlia right here in the very corner of the bed even has a few little buds on it. The goal with the garden this year is to make it beautiful as well as functional. I've talked about it before here on my channel, but I've really fallen in love with fresh cut flowers and having lots of flowers in the house. So as you'll see, as we walk throughout the garden, I've incorporated a lot of flowers throughout the garden this year, definitely a lot more than last year. The raised bed garden is also a little bit bigger this year than it was last year because we did add several new beds. These raised beds underneath the arch trellises were here last year, but the garden space where you see all those cattle panels on the other side was all in ground garden. And then these L-shaped beds on the outer corners, most of those are new this year as well. We have a video of us putting together the raised beds and installing the cattle panels and all that. I'll link it in the description below for you guys if you wanna see that process. So we're still on the outside of the garden. We just came from over there where the hollyhocks is. And this section here, the front of this bed is dahlias. 
and behind it we have broccoli, cauliflower, and some cabbages. I just went through the other day and pinched a lot of my dahlias here that are growing that are already pretty big. I did not pinch my dahlias last year, so we'll see how that compares and if that really does help the growth and bush out a little bit better. I'm quite pleased with how all of our brassicas are doing. So far, there's really no damage to any of them. Uh, hopefully that stays <laughs> true. Last year, I never netted my broccoli or cabbages and they all did really well and were very successful. So hopefully this year that trend continues. This cabbage here is quite large. It uh, is already starting to form a head in the middle there too as well. We've got some little broccoli heads starting to form. So the dahlias and cabbage kind of pattern continues all the way around the L shape and up until about here. And then it just starts solidly dahlias and flowers, the rest of the L. I have a mixture of dahlias, cosmos, sunflowers, and zinnias all intermixed growing here. These sunflowers we planted together all along this edge. They are the pro cut variety. I'm really happy with the germination. There's only been like one or two that didn't germinate, which I'm really pleased with that. And that could have just been a bird eating it. I don't know. <laughs> I got this particular seed packet for these Pro Cut sunflowers at Johnny Seeds. Pro Cut is supposed to have a lot less pollen and be basically pollenless compared to traditional sunflowers. So that'll be nice for having cut flowers in the house. Let's walk back around to the front and go in the main entrance of the garden. Although I do have an entrance on every side of the garden, this big main entrance here is the one we use primarily and that's just what we call the entry to the garden. Now eventually we're planning on having some sort of pergola or arch there. I don't know if that's going to happen this year or not though. Now that we're in the main entrance of the garden, this first bed here has some really beautiful purple cabbages growing and some sage, cilantro, and a couple different lettuces. The cilantro is trying to bolt on me and the sage has already gone to flower. However, I think it's still beautiful and I'm really enjoying all those sage flowers. I've been cutting them and bringing them into the house and they smell lovely. This cattle panel archway last year was a lot smaller. We just had a few cattle panels and this year we added a couple extra down to the end of the tunnel because we had a few extra cattle panels. The cattle panels I have found have been really handy for growing climbing things. I have a lot of pole and green beans climbing up these cattle panels this year. That is primarily what I'm growing on them. Last year I also had some cucamelons, which I think I have like one or two cucamelons that self sowed themselves from last year. I grew cucamelons all up this cattle panel last summer. They are basically like a little tiny miniature cucumber that looks kind of like a watermelon that are a little bit sour. They're also called sour gherkins. They're super duper cute. I think they're adorable. So I'm happy to see that I had some volunteer plants because I forgot to start some this year. The pole beans I'm growing this year are from Johnny Seeds. They're the same ones I grew last year. They're called Scheisel's Pole Green Beans. I think they're really yummy and delicious. I'm also growing some bush beans in a different section of the garden. Now, if you are planning on growing your green beans up and over a trellis or an arch, make sure you buy the pole bean variety because bush bean will be just like the name. It'll be a bush. On the other side of this cattle panel here, there's a lot of lettuces and carrots growing. Once these arches are completely covered this summer and the hottest part of the summer, it will put a little bit of shade on these back beds. So I tried to grow most of my lettuce on the back side of these beds so they would get that little bit of afternoon shade protection in the hotter months of the summer. This is the Monte Carlo lettuce. It was a pelleted seed that I got from Johnny's. I also have a few beets growing here and some carrots as well. And this bed next to it, there's a lot more lettuce growing. I love the different colors of these leaves. This one is speckled and looks so pretty. And I hope this red comes across well on camera because it is just beautiful in person. 
The middle of this bed right here is empty at the moment because I just harvested some carrots and turnips out of there the other day. And now I need to plant something else. There's also some red Russian kale and other lettuce in this bed too. This kale variety is called dinosaur kale. This is my first year growing it. I have noticed it has a little bit more bug damage than the red Russian kale for whatever reason. And then these two plants here at the end are zucchini. Let's see, what's the variety of this one? Tigris zucchini. I've tried to disperse the zucchini throughout the garden so that hopefully when the squash bugs attack, which I'm sure they will, uh, they don't get to all the plants all at once. The next bed over is more lettuces and carrots and green beans all along the arch trellis. There's green beans along pretty much every single arch trellis here in the garden. Amongst this lettuce, there's also a volunteer tomato plant growing. I also have two volunteer tomato plants growing here. This one's just growing right in the middle of the pathway. I think I'm just going to keep it here and train it up this trellis. And this one's growing on the back side. It even has some little flowers already on it. I'm not positive by any means on what variety of tomato this is. My best guess is that it would be Barry's Crazy Cherry Tomato because I did have a few of those growing here along the pathway and it produces really big clusters of yellow cherry tomatoes. So I'm sure quite a few of those could have self-seeded themselves. I actually have several different tomato plants growing voluntarily uh, throughout the garden. On the other side of the arched cattle panel, my arugula is starting to flower and go to seed or rocket, depending on what you want to call it. And the spinach is also going to seed as well. Then we have a lot of garlic, which I just cut the garlic scapes off the other day. There's two beds of garlic here. And this pretty flowered bunch here in the front is some fresh thyme. This other bed of garlic has a couple ground cherries, as well as those green beans growing along the edge. There's a little bit of a hill of gravel here because Ryan's working on putting some landscape fabric underneath these rocks. We have landscape fabric underneath the rest of the rocks, but this little section here behind me did not get any, and the weeds definitely were a lot worse there than they were in the other areas where the fabric was. So we're just gonna go ahead and add some to that area because we do have leftover landscaping fabric. This cattle panel has things growing on it already. I'm not sure the exact variety. I think it's called sugar magnolia pea, but it is a purple potted pea and it has just beautiful little purple flowers on it with kind of a pink backing. I think they're quite lovely. I just noticed actually, here's a little tiny pea pod. On the other side of these peas are our potatoes. This bed is just completely covered in potatoes. It's about the height of my hip already. In the outer L-shaped bed next to the potatoes, there's more sunflowers growing, as well as some other flower varieties. I have Gumfrina and Status and some Slosia. Ryan and the boys surprised me for Mother's Day with some more dahlias, and I planted those just the other day in this section of bed here. Those dahlias aren't sprouting up just yet. And I have dahlias also tucked into several of the corners of the smaller raised beds. I just didn't mention it as we were walking past because there's nothing sprouting yet. At the end of the arch tunnel, if you will, I have onions in these two beds and some spinach that is already starting to flower. These onions are primarily Egyptian walking onions, which are a perennial here where I'm at in Zone 7. They self-seed themselves pretty regularly. They're kind of cool. They make this crazy alien looking seed head on the top and they'll fall over and self-seed themselves. Now these onions, I have just been cutting the greens and using them like a green onion or chives, something like that in dishes. We've made it to the back of the garden where our sugar snap pea wall is. And there are some poppies and yarrow growing down here in front as well. The sugar snap peas we've been harvesting 
the last several days. They are very sweet and yummy. I just made a salad last night with the sugar snap peas and some fresh lettuce and arugula with some of the strawberries from the garden, which I'll show you in a second, and feta with a balsamic kind of honey dressing on the top, and it was really good. I really liked it. Next to those sugar snap peas, I have more bachelor's button growing. Behind the sugar snap peas, kind of on the outer edge, I've let the kids play around and plant a few different things. There's a couple little tomatoes growing there and just random seeds, but the kids stuck in the ground. Our blackberry trellis is also covered in a lot of little red blackberries. On the opposite side of the back entrance, there are some squashes here growing on the end. This is a new squash variety to me. It's called Blue Hubbard squash. I was watching another gardening YouTube channel and they mentioned that Blue Hubbard squash is a good host plant for squash bugs. And we deal very heavily with squash bugs here. So I'm hoping that the squash bugs are all attracted to this plant and leave my other squash plants alone. We'll see though how that works this summer. Then this is also a bunch of sugar snap peas here along this trellis. And down here in front of the sugar snap peas is some sweet corn growing. And I also have sweet corn and sunflowers all along the back side of this trellis here as well. There's two beds here of our asparagus. And this bed is just kind of like a half bed of asparagus. And a kitty cat. <laughs> I have a few squash plants planted next to the asparagus. There's also this really big carrot growing here that has started to flower. I did try to rip it out myself yesterday and it's pretty stuck down in there. I'm interested to see how big this carrot is because this carrot was one that I sowed last year and just forgot about. And so this is a second year on it. So I'm gonna need Ryan's help to pull that thing out of the ground and we'll see how big it is here in a couple days. <laughs> Next to the two asparagus beds, we have a bed pretty much completely full of strawberries and flowers on the backside. And as we're walking over to that bed, this cattle panel bed has lots of miniature personalized sized melons in it. And I just sewed those not too long ago and they're already starting to sprout and pop up out of the ground. Little tiny melons. At the very end of the bed with the melons, there are two butternut squashes that are growing here as well. Over in this L-shaped bed, the outer edge of pretty much this whole bed is strawberries. And then there's some other random things planted amongst it. I have bush green beans growing, one random pumpkin, and some cosmos sunflowers and zinnias. And I also have a few watermelon planted in here as well. The plan is with the big the big traditional sized watermelons is to have them sprawl out into the grass on the back side of the garden here. We really enjoyed having fresh homegrown watermelon last year. So hopefully this method works out for us this year too. I also have sunflowers growing here next to these strawberries. These sunflowers are just traditional sunflowers. They're not the pro cut pollenless variety like I have on the front side. These are actually ones that I saved seed from, from the sunflowers that I grew last year. So I'm not 100% sure which seed I planted here, but I had Lemon Queen, which is like a yellow sunflower, and some of the fluffy varieties in the teddy bear collection that I grew last year. So it could be any number of those all planted throughout. Coming back over to the long skinny beds, this bed has cucumbers and then onions down both sides. Beside the bed with the cucumbers and the onions, I have another bed of onions planted along the outside. There are some tomatoes and eggplants and peppers. Now, this is my first year growing eggplants, and I have to say they all look terrible. I don't know what's eating them, but I'm leaving them in the ground in case that bug is staying away from something else and just attacking the eggplants, because I'd rather lose the eggplants than any other vegetable, because they're not my favorite, but I figured I'd give them a try this year because sometimes when you grow things yourself that are homegrown, it tastes way better than what you would buy in the store. 
the eggplants are getting destroyed and eaten up by something though. The next bed over is tomatoes underneath the cattle panel trellis and two tomatillos at the very end and more peppers and more onions. I keep saying pepper and pepper keeps running over to me. But this is our cat named Pepper. <laughs> so she keeps coming over. She's like, you're calling my name. There's quite a few of flowers on them and a couple of even little tiny peppers. I have all different types. I have jalapenos, paprika peppers, corbachi peppers, California wonder bell peppers, sugar rush peach peppers, and a couple other ones I'm probably forgetting about. I'll be sure to give you guys more details on the peppers once they're actually all producing fruit and we can show you the different types. Then next to that bed, there's another bed of onions and tomatoes. This particular bed has onions on both sides and tomatoes all up the middle. And the last bed here is tomatoes, peppers, and basil. The basil I sowed directly into the ground from seed and it's just starting to pop up. This tomato here already has little green tomatoes on it. This is a better boy plus tomato, I think. My tomatoes were about, I don't know, five, six inches tall. And I went to a local nursery about a month ago and they had foot tall tomato plants. I think it was four for a dollar. And I thought that was too good of a deal to pass up. So I planted out a lot of tomato plants from that nursery. And then I still kept mine and planted them out. They're just in one of the other beds. This is a corbachi pepper. It already has a green pepper on it. And then this is my favorite tomato variety from last year. It's called Sun Gold. And it has two little green ones. I'm gonna have to start tying these up the cattle panel here soon. I'll go into more detail about all the different tomato varieties I have planted once we do a harvest video here. So I'm really excited that there are little tiny green cherry tomatoes on there already. Going down to the next bed here, those are all strawberries along that back L-shaped bed, as well as some yarrow and sunflowers and a few other different flower varieties, but primarily strawberries along that back bed up against our pallet compost bins. And then this bed, this bed, and that bed is all covered in strawberries. I just harvested, I think it was seven or eight pounds of strawberries last night. So it might be another day or so before I can harvest a bunch more, but there's still tons of green ones on all these beds. And I do see a few little red ones here and there. They're ripening pretty quickly at the moment. So that's exciting. Some of them are just dangling over the edges too. This bed has been producing a lot of fused blossoms, which create some very interesting, unique looking shaped strawberries. We've been loving the strawberries. They've been so yummy and that's definitely the kids' favorite part of the garden at the moment. I have a bunch of herbs planted in my kitchen garden over next to the house, but I think I'll do a separate video of the landscaping beds around the house because this video is probably getting pretty long as it is because we covered a lot of territory here going over all the raised beds. So thanks for watching and the next video I'll post the tour around the house, so stay tuned for that. Bye y'all.